Hello everyone, I feel I've reached a new milestone in Rainbow 3D, so I just wanted to make a little update on uh, what's been going on since the last time. In my previous video I showed you how the splicing works, which is of course the core of the system. It takes 12 inputs and cut the filament as needed and uh, splice them together into a new multi material strand. Uh, but another important part of that device will be the buffer system. And I want an active buffer that can uh, keep uh, positive pressure on the filament coming into the printer. Uh, that should reduce the risk of having the splices break because the printer is pulling too hard on them. And uh, it should also make for very uh, consistent extrusion from the printer since it will uh, have uh, constant pressures provided by Rainbow 3D. So even when printing single material, it, it might provide more consistent extrusion because uh, the printer will have a very fixed pressure to work with. And like when it's pulling from a spool where it will sometimes have the filament be tight and it has to turn the spool and then the spool roll over a bit and it will be slack. And so you have constant variation there. That will be completely elimin eliminated with this system, because uh, only the Rainbow 3D will see that, and it, that will have a closed-loop system that will regulate the pressure coming into the printer. So, but to be able to implement that, of course, I need a buffer, which I'm uh, not done with, but I also need a pressure sensor, which is what I've been uh, developing since my last video. So, I have designed and built a uh, filament pressure sensor that can uh, detect how much uh, the extruders inside the Rainbow 3D is actually pushing towards the printer. So that's what I'm gonna show here today. I'll switch to the other camera and then I can uh, show you playing around a bit with the uh, pressure sensor and demonstrate how it's working. Here is the actual output of the sensor. So you can see if I push the filament in, you can see that the pressure increase, and if I pull it out, it decreases. And uh, then it has... There's a little bit of dead zone there because of friction in the tubes and stuff, but uh, it should land at around the center. Uh, you can uh, adjust a dead zone here, which is like uh, how much of this uh, target pressure it needs to be before it uh, starts moving the filament at all. So right now tracking is turned off, so it will not try to compensate when I increase or decrease the pressure. But if I put it uh, close to the target pressure at zero, and then enable tracking, it will start to follow all my movements. So if I now pull it out, you can see that the, the um, pressure sensor reacts to it and see that the pressure is decreased. So then it will move the filament in the needed direction to make it go back to the target. So now it's very easy for me to pull it in and out and the, the uh, extruders will just keep doing whatever I uh, demand from it. So if the printer tries to pull out filament it will just give it and if you have retraction it will uh, just push the filament back again. So uh, it has, like the, the uh, spring loading inside the sensor is allowing for about 10 millimeters of movement, so uh, in each direction. So a retraction that is less than 10 millimeters can be absorbed instantly by the, the springs. Uh, if it is more than 10 millimeters, it will need to actually back the filament back into the buffer. So if uh, if someone wants to run more than 10 millimeters of uh, retractions, uh, you might need to reserve a little bit of space in the buffer so that uh, it can actually swallow whatever is coming out of the printer. So as you can see, it is then quickly reacting to any movements I'm doing. So it follows whatever the printer wants to do. So of course now the control system is controlling the uh, the input and, and output extruders directly and uh, in, when I'm done with the buffer it will uh, control like the, the instant, instantaneous reaction will be from the buffer to adjust for whatever happens there and uh, then if you are pulling filament out 
then it will, of course, as quickly as possible, replenish the uh, the buffer so that it is kept nearly full all the time. So, and if if you have uh, less than ten millimeters of uh, retractions, you can keep it completely full all the time until it actually starts splicing. Then it will have the buffer to feed the printer while the splice process is going on. So, and if I now push this in a bit and hold it there, and then I can go and adjust the target pressure. So now it will try to push it out. So now it's pushing. Oh, it's yeah, that was a little, <laughs> a little bit too much. Let's go down here. So you can see now if I push it in and out, it will follow. I can increase the pressure a little bit more to make it a bit more responsive. I'm probably gonna fine tune the uh, the control algorithms are a bit. They're very naive right now, so you can see that if if you set a low pressure, the the maximum speed it will actually um, try to compensate for the pressure loss with is fairly reduced. So the optimal would be to to have it uh, react at the at the same speed no matter uh, what target pressure you have, but just have it stop at the the right moment. I I can uh, increase the gain here, which will should make it faster, but it will make it also less stable. So now it is coming out fairly quickly, and it works very fine like that. But if I do very quick reactions, you can hear it goes a bit unstable. Yeah, so it goes into oscillations because the gain is now too high in the control loop. So and I can also feel that it is like if I do quick movement, it will for a little while. Uh, generate some uh, oscillations in the movement. So I will put the gain back to it. seems like 25 is a good uh, point of, like that, that keeps it pretty stable for any quick movement. It will react to it pretty well. So and I mean if you're printing fast enough to use this much filament, I guess that is, uh, yeah, very few printers would be able to do that, I guess, but uh, it's hard to judge how fast this is actually moving, and I haven't really measured it. But uh, but that, that shouldn't be a problem to uh, tune the algorithms to be more like a more proper PID controller should fix this. It's a very naive control system I implemented now just to test this out. So, as you can see, you have a few things you can uh, set here in the uh, control system, in the control panel. So, one is the target pressure. I can uh, turn on and off the tracking. And then, like I mentioned briefly, I think, is the, uh, the dead zone, uh, which is uh, how far off the uh, pressure needs to be from the target pressure before it uh, starts to correct anything at all. And then you have the gain, which is uh, how fast it will try to uh, compensate for any errors here. So if you put this up too high, it will uh, be uh, it will go into oscillations. Too low, it will be very slow to react. So uh, I, need, I, I need to probably have like PID proportional uh, oh proportional integral and derivative controls, so uh, I can make it uh, be much more precise. But then again, uh, this is fairly non-critical. Um, uh, I, I don't think it needs to be very advanced to, to do the job it needs to do, but uh, I will play around with that when, uh, when I'm actually done with the, the buffer system and start testing this out. Okay, that was a demonstration of how the pressure sensor and uh, the uh, control system works right now. Uh, I made another demonstration including a uh, scale, so uh, I can show the actual pressure that the system makes by uh, jamming the filament up against the scale. 
So let's jump to that. Okay, so here you can see the test rig that I made. Uh, it is uh, simply a scale placed uh, behind the uh, output tube, and I clamp the output tube so that when the uh, Rainbow 3D tries to push the filament out, it will hit the scale, and uh, I can measure the pressure that it actually generates. And uh, as you can see here now, it's set to track and uh, with a fairly small dead zone, and uh, I have set the target pressure to zero. So if I increase it, this, it will start to move the filament until it hits the scale. So you can see now it's uh, at 4-5 grams of pressure. And as I increase the target pressure, it will increase the uh, push towards the scale. So you can see this is now moving proportionally with the slider. So as I go forward and back, it will increase and reduce the, uh, the pressure on the scale. Then I can go up to the whatever limit the the, yeah, the maximum pressure of the sensor is uh, a bit over a kilo I think I don't know if the extruders will be able to actually push that hard they have yeah okay yeah, so it's about a kilo which is the current limit so now. The uh, regulator system will just it will continuously measure the uh, actual pressure and uh, run the extruders forward and back to, to maintain that pressure. So whenever the printer starts pulling filament out so the pressure is reduced, it will produce more filament to, to, to keep the pressure. And, and the same if the printer does a retraction, it will quickly uh, wind the filament back out so that uh, the pressure remains the same. Okay, so that was it for today. Hope you enjoyed the update. Uh, if you have any questions, just uh, pop a comment below. And uh, it would be awesome if you would uh, like and subscribe. See you next time. Bye-bye.